Today we have something a little different for you. It is not a murder location, it is not Disney. We are in the College Park section of Orlando and for this story we have to go back to 1957. And tonight the stars will be out. And don't you know that God is Pooh Bear? The evening star must be drooping and shedding her sparkler dims on the prairie, which is just before the coming of complete night that blesses the earth, darkens all the rivers, cups the peaks, and folds the final shore in. Nobody, nobody knows what's going to happen to anybody besides the forlorn rags of growing old. Think of Dean Moriarty, I even think of old Dean Moriarty, the father we never found. Think of Dean Moriarty, I think of Dean Moriarty. <laughs> Does the name Jack Kerouac mean anything to you? The author of a book called On the Road and its sequel, Dharma Bums. For a short time from 1957 to 1958, author Jack Kerouac stayed in this house in Orlando, Florida. In this quiet little neighborhood, to be exact, he didn't actually stay in the house, but he stayed in a room in the back with his mom. Currently, the Jack Kerouac Foundation is the owner of this house. They bought it and they turned it into a work for stay, I guess you would say. Basically, writers can stay here in this house. They can apply to stay in this house that Jack Kerouac stayed in and wrote Dharma Bums. And they can live here for free and eat. It's actually pretty cool. Right now, it is currently and will always be on the historical marker, the historical places list. And there's a plaque for it right there. It says writer Jack Kerouac, 1922 to 1969, lived and wrote in this 1920s tin-roofed house between 1957 and 1958. How cool is that? A lot of people make the pilgrimage down here to Orlando, Florida, searching out the locations of Jack Kerouac and certain places that he pointed out in his book, On the Road. Did you know that? No. No? He lived in the back room of this building with his mother. He moved down here pretty much penniless to be closer to his mom and his sister. And it was inside this place, in the back of the house, where there's actually well-known photographs of him in here with his notebooks of different travels from he made across the country. And it is in front of this door that there is a famous photograph of him sitting here eating tangerines that he supposedly grew here in the backyard. Such a tiny room that he would often come out here in the middle of the night with his sleeping bag and camp out right here. Not sure if the room they stayed in is right there or on the other side of the door, but you can take a tour of this house for about a hundred bucks, I think it was on the website, but you can always just come here and make the pilgrimage yourself. I know, I know, it is just a house. So what makes it special? Why this house out of all the different places that Jack Kerouac lived? Well, it is in this house, when he moved here, it was pretty, he was pretty penniless. He didn't have a penny to his name. He spent most of his money on alcohol and drugs to fuel his writing. And he was living here while publishers, potential publishers were reading his book on the road. And it is here where he became famous almost overnight and he became the voice of a generation, the beat generation. And it was also here, I'm saying also a lot, it was here that he wrote the follow-up to On the Road called The Dharma Bums. Now do keep in mind that if you do come here to visit to make the pilgrimage that there is someone living here. So don't go to knock on the door. In fact, there's a sign right there on the front door that says privacy, please. There is somebody in there writing. They're here for a short time. I thought it was for a year, but it is only three months. 
If you do find yourself in the Orlando area and you do want to visit the Jack Kerouac house, keep in mind that it is about a five to 10 minute stop, just enough time for some photos, create some memories, pay your respects to Jack Kerouac himself. And the time that he spent here, it wasn't very long, but the time he did spend here was quite significant to his life. Eventually he died in 1969 at the age of 47. Basically, he drank himself to death. A lot of famous authors artists tend to do that. He died a little too young. I think 47 in the late 60s. That was about normal, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's still very cool though, right? Wherever I come, luck is coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck is dead in state. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way. 